In this video, I'm gonna finish the Nautilus rocket mass here that I've been working on, and I'm super excited because last night I got it running. It still needs some improvements, but I started up and I ran it for a couple hours. But I only got the shop up to 57 degrees, and it's 48 degrees now. It's been 12 hours, I've been editing video, I figured I'd come out here and see how it was. Normally it drops 25 degrees, so for it to drop just nine degrees is pretty incredible. I'm pretty ecstatic right now. This thing's like magic. Let me show you what I did to finish this thing up. I need a little bit of sand so that I don't have any air gaps. Air makes really good thermal insulation, which I don't want. I had a huge air gap between the two pipes on the bottom of this thing, so I taped the top and the seam, filled it with sand, and then taped the bottom. No air gap there. pipe at the bottom is 16 gauge steel and it's round and it's very strong. If I filled this thing with gravel and sand it should only be like three pounds per square inch. I don't know what that is in metric but there's not very much force and that thing will be fine. Plus it's round so it'll you know if it got pushed on the top it would try to squish but it can't squish because there's going to be material next to it so in order to keep all of the stuff that I'm putting inside this inside of it, I have a bunch of scrap countertop pieces that I got from a guy. It was either for free or maybe it was like five bucks. I was going to do some landscaping with it and I didn't, but that's good because now I can use it for this. People say don't ever put rocks in the fire because they'll explode. Well, if they're dry, they won't. But if they have been exposed to enough moisture, they can explode. And I didn't know if granite was one of those. So I looked it up to find out what makes the difference between rocks that can potentially pop from vapor pressure when they get hot versus rocks that don't and just release it. This is a little piece of open cell foam that I have and this is a little piece of closed cell foam. This is water. It ran off of this a little bit, but it absorbed in and that one is still there. Open cell foam is permeable. The pockets of air are open. It absorbs water very readily and this obviously does not. There's not much you can do to get it inside it. You can, but not very well. Rocks are very similar to foam in this way. Rocks aren't perfectly open or closed cell. They are some blend of the two, same as foam. This probably has some closed cells in it, and this definitely has some open cells in it. It doesn't penetrate very easily. This one is very easily penetrated, and it's the exact same thing with rocks. It depends which type of rock you have. This is similar to granite. This is similar to sandstone. Sandstone readily absorbs water. It has enough closed cells in it that if you heat it up and it is saturated, it will explode. Granite cannot absorb very much moisture, and if you get it warm, it won't and there's lists on the internet that tell you which types of rocks will pop when you heat them up with water in them and which ones won't. Don't use rocks out of rivers. Mine weren't in a river. They were sitting out in the yard. Also, bricks won't explode. They're porous enough that the vapor just gases off and they won't pop. Time to add some fill material. Basically, I just gotta fill up all the gaps and not get too much in there or around there because I need to seal this thing on yet. This is my first piece of transfer pipe. This part mounts to the five inch pipe at the bottom and then it'll wiggle back and forth like this the whole way up through the entire mass transfer system portion of the heater. Let me show you a little demonstration. This one's just sand. This one is sand with layers of aluminum foil in it. I got them slightly damp so that they would hold their shape but normal sand doesn't really hold its shape very well. And that angle right there is the angle of repose. But if you put layers in between, and then another one, and then another one, the angle of repose off of each layer is all that you'll get the effect from. In this way, the sand and the gravel that I put in will support itself, and I don't have to worry about squishing my pipes. Just sand. It doesn't support itself, and all that sand pushing to the outside could potentially collapse the walls of my drain pipe. This one, has the aluminum foil layers in it. And even if I push on it and wiggle it, not a whole lot happens, at least by comparison to that one. <laughs> now you can see the foil. And all that aluminum will serve another purpose also. 
I learned about that from a channel called Practical Engineering. I'll have a link to his video in the description if you want to learn more about it. The hot exhaust coming out of the hole where this is going to seal on, I'm not going to be able to film it and be in there working at the same time. I'm going to seal it tight with this IPG tape. This is high temp HVAC tape. It's good to almost 400 degrees. And after I use that to seal the gaps, I'll seal around that whole part with fire clay. And even if that doesn't work, the whole thing's gonna be completely surrounded by sand and gravel and granite. It'll be sealed. When the hot air comes in, if it just goes back and forth, the hot air obviously is going to try to make its way out as quickly as it can going to the top. This should work pretty well because it has to make all these trips sideways over and over again. And the whole time that it's in this pipe, it's going to be transferring energy to the mass that surrounds it. Initially, I thought about doing this where these cuts were not as far as they should have been so that they blocked the air so that the air would come up and you would create a little block that would keep hotter air at the top and it would have to cool slightly to drop below this blockage here and here and here so that you would keep the hot air in for longer and only the cool air would be able to rush out of each section faster. I think they call this stratification, but I'm not sure. But if I do that, at each joint, I'll be reducing the amount of air that could flow through. And even if I did only like a little tiny, tiny bit, it still would reduce the volume of air that could pass through that section right here. So I came up with what I think is a slightly better idea. If it tips down, the hot air will want to stay in the upper portion of each section. And if hot air wants to stay in those sections for longer, potentially giving me a more efficient system. Now, obviously this drawing is a gross exaggeration. I'm planning on only doing it a tiny bit, maybe like half an inch on each section, but that's the plan. Sand and gravel's up to the first layer. Time to put some aluminum. I just got to do that about a thousand more times. Time for the next piece of the puzzle. Oh no! I knew this was going to suck. Come on! I'm ready for the next section of pipe. This is time consuming. Probably because I don't know what I'm doing. I've never done it before. Got her in, all sealed up. Prop that end up with some film material and the bottom part right there is taped. And then I packed a whole bunch of mortar around it. I'm finally getting close to being finished with the mass heat transfer portion of this thing. This is the second to last pipe, third to last pipe, because this has to go into the chimney system. This is one of two of the last angles that I have to cut. And this has taken absolutely forever. I've had to cut angles like this 21 times. Once you get it started, it's not as bad. But not only have I had to cut 21 angles, I've also had to make 10 connection points. And after working it out, comes to somewhere in the neighborhood of 200 pieces of tape. Sticking 200 pieces of tape to something might not sound that bad, but here's one of the reasons why taping this is such a pain. It's worth it, it's aluminum, it's gonna transfer the heat out into the stone and make my exhaust system super efficient, but when you put a piece of tape on, these little grooves that are in this aluminum drain spout, so you have to push the aluminum foil down real hard to get it to seal. Because if it's not sealed, you're just gonna release exhaust gas into the, into the room. You gotta do that on every piece of tape. You can see the aluminum that has built up on my thumb from it, shiny. So on each joint, there's one here, one here, one here, one here, right there, this one, and one right there. At least seven pieces of tape, 21 angles like this. Since I use scrap pieces, so I had to make 10 connection points to fit them together and pieces of tape for all those also, like this one. I reinforced every switchback with a layer of concrete because I had an extra bag of concrete, so why not use it? I also went back to the store and bought more sand and gravel because I didn't get enough, and I still didn't get enough, so I had to go again. But I still kept the complete cost of everything that I got to build this thing at under $200. At this point, 
<laughs> I'd say it's not worth it because the amount of time that it took to use just the scrap that I had laying around to keep the cost as low as I possibly could made this take an exceptionally long period of time, which is why there hasn't been a video out for a while. And if that wasn't enough little things that I had to do, <laughs> There are also about 170 pieces of aluminum foil that I had to lay in this thing next to each switchback. Don't even know if that was worth the effort, but I know for a fact there's no way this pipe will get squished at all inside of this huge, super heavy pile of junk. I know I could have used other stuff that I sourced from, like, the ground, but unfortunately it's so cold here now. The ground is frozen. I wasn't going to chip through frozen ground to try to get dirt or cob or whatever for this thing. I also utilized 22 feet of this stuff all wiggled back and forth in there. Set straight. Did I do the math right? Yep. Let's see if it fits before I take this last part. Well, would you look at that? Exactly the way I planned it. Still gotta tape this part yet, and the next part, and the next joint, and the next joint. Question now is, was all the trouble worth it? Really, I won't know if it's worth it until it's completely done and I actually get to use the thing. Which would suck if it doesn't work well because all this time and effort, like two weeks of working on this thing like crazy, 14 hour days just to find out that it sucks. Yeah, I'd be upset. But there's some science and logic behind the madness that makes me think that this thing is gonna work out really well. Once I get my film material just a little above the bottom of the drain spout, I put in my first layer of aluminum foil. After all six pieces are laid out the whole way around, I put in more film material. Once I get a nice little layer of that, I tamp it down. And then I do another one. And then I do another layer of fill. And I tamp that. And I do another layer of foil. And then another layer of fill. And another layer of foil. And then with the extra concrete that I had, I was putting a layer on top of this. The strength of even a thin layer of concrete will make sure that this doesn't get crushed. Sand does not compress very easily. You can't compact it. So I don't need to worry about it settling. So with the concrete plate across, it will rest on the bed of sand and transfer any force that would come from this area onto the side. Super fast science time. Air is an incredible insulator, which also means if you have hot air, it's hard to get the heat out of that air and into other stuff. It's the same thing for the hot exhaust gas. So to make any heater very efficient, if you're gonna try to take all of the heat from the exhaust gas and keep it inside the room, you need a good method for transfer. In the last video, I told you these numbers, air is 0 0.026, and then from 0.25 to 4, you have sand, gravel, granite, concrete, brick. So their range of conduction is a lot bigger than air, but it's still relatively small because aluminum is 205. That's why I use aluminum downspout and aluminum foil. That aluminum will carry the heat away. The energy level is trying to equalize. So if you have huge energy here, which is really hot, and low energy here, which is cold, the more temperature differential there is the faster the energy disperses. When the exhaust is super hot, you're going to be able to dump that heat energy very easily. But once it starts to cool, as it goes through the mass transfer system, you have to make sure that you can get that heat away from the pipe quickly so that you can remove as much energy as possible before it goes outside. So having that aluminum downspout with a bunch of sheets of aluminum foil right up against it, there's going to be a crazy temperature differential and it's going to, the aluminum foil will help to disperse the heat into the mass, warm that mass up as fast as possible so that you can stop burning wood. Now you might be thinking because the temperature disperses into the mass very quickly, if that's my goal, then shouldn't it disperse out of it very quickly? Well, it wouldn't because it's completely surrounded by rock and mortar. It's going to be time released. It's based on how much mass there is and then how much temperature is in that mass. If that mass is very hot, it will make the room hot and it will cool off quickly. But once it gets down to a temperature that's close to the temperature in the room, all of the conduction and convection and radiation that's going on will be between everything in the room because it's warm, so it will lower its temperature slower. Does that make sense? Today is a good day. Finally get to put the last piece on and finish this part. After somewhere in the neighborhood of 20 bags of sand and gravel. This thing is finally full. You put this much work into something, you might as well make it pretty, at least a little bit. I'm gonna put all the leftover chunks, granite countertop, all over the top. As much mass as possible. Now it's time. I need to make that transfer pipe that goes from here 
to here. I was gonna finish the video there, but it would have made me angry if I didn't get to see this thing run. Built everything off camera so that it wouldn't take nearly as long because everything that I made was out of scrap junk. So everything I had to make the parts and then put the parts together and try to make it work. Ended up taking like four days. Let me show you cool stuff I made. The helium tank is embedded in this fire clay perlite mix. I knew that wasn't a perfect seal, so I sealed it inside and out with high temp 650 degree RTV. I believe that'll work for now. And I fired this so that it would be hard, at least on the outside. Eventually this portion here is going to get covered with mortar to make it seal better and to make it more sturdy because this stuff is not terribly resilient. But I had to split the helium tank in half and I used a bunch of little pieces of scrap to make this groove. And I glued fire rope on there. So that seals down on there. Nice and tight. That took forever to make this custom thing right here. I had to make this removable because I need this for a clean out. I forgot to do something. I wanted to weld bolts on so I could wire it together so that it stays nice and tight. The manifold was difficult. I wanted to get as much air from around the tank as possible. So I made that part. And then the transfer pipe it had to be removable also. And I spring loaded it so that it stays real snug. Same connection type of thing as the helium tank where it goes together. You can just pull those springs off and then that sits down on there and then that goes right on there. And it's held real nice and tight with those springs. After it goes through all of this and gets it all hot, I was gonna run it out the window, but as luck would have it, this top window doesn't go down, the bottom window just slides up. So I had to put it down there. This is a temporary solution. It's a piece of foam board. It's sealed in with insulation foam all around the edges. And then my exhaust, I just taped this dryer hose on because it was what I had, because I want to try this thing out. I need an exhaust damper to shut off the flow coming back in eventually, but for right now, this is gonna work to test it. And then you can't see it, but it's outside. Just hung it from a tree so that it's pointing up. It's not directly attached to the tree though. It's got to stand off. But like I said, this whole thing is temporary just so I can try this thing out. Without further ado, time to test it. I already squished up paper like this and threw it down in there. It shouldn't work. With all this being unheated and not broken in, it most likely will not go the direction that it's supposed to, which is why I built that primer door over on the other side. But we'll give it a shot. It didn't go down. Paper's not burning. Let's try this again. Oh, frustrating. Let's see if I can get it. I drop it down in there, it goes out. Now it's going. You can see it a little bit. I don't think I put enough paper in there. I got it going down in there. I just needed more paper. Yeah, it's going the way it's supposed to, which is pretty cool. There isn't a ton of flow, but then again, this is still cold. So that is technically trying to create a competing chimney right now. It's probably why this is burning the way it is. Question now is, is this thing hot? And it is, I can feel it from here. So just from burning a little bit of paper, that tank is hot. I mean, it's not red, but I wouldn't touch it. This part is not hot at all. Feels like it is room temperature. So that means all the energy that's being released as heat through burning this stuff in there is being absorbed by the system and it's staying inside of the room. At this point, I feel confident, which is nice because this took forever. The next project is gonna be really cool, but quick, but it's just because I need a break from working nonstop 14 hours a day every single day of the week. But after that, it's back to Aquaman. Oh, and Patreon exclusive videos coming soon. All right, I'll see you next time.